We traveled 2,000 miles to the most northerly Lynx course in the world. Come along with us. This is the most iconic par three in all of Europe. Confirmed. Uh, Epic. I wanted to. You don't care. Yeah, you yeah. Was on my I mean, this, balls, is, right? this is your money. This is me, James. As a kid, I dreamt of playing professional golf on tour. I worked my butt off for it, and I actually got pretty good. But this fickle old game can be like a gorgeous, toxic girlfriend. You put in all the hard yards and rarely get anything back. Then, every once in a while, when you're at your lowest ebb, she buys you flowers and takes you for a nice dinner. You play great, roll in a few long putts and take the money. God damn it, she really is beautiful. We're going the distance. Like all good things though, they come to an end. Two years ago I left that gorgeous psychopath behind but discovered elements of her to love indefinitely. I joined the team at Manners and switched the meticulous tracking of stats and scores for adventures to parts unknown to play golf courses well off the beaten track. The weather has turned. We're not going to check man then, would you? <laughs> if golf is a game to be explored, I'm your dutiful guide. And in this episode, Lofoten and Lynx is my Norwegian frontier. Welcome to a change of course. I'm going to get a break, please. <laughs> We've travelled 2,000 miles from London into a mystical land that has given us the likes of Edvard Munch, Roald Dahl, and more importantly, Victor Hovland. After a two hour flight from London to Oslo and a one and a half hour flight from Oslo to Harstad Narvik, we drive west to the enchanting seaside town of Svalver. Postcard perfection. This is the cod fishing capital of the world. When the temperate waters of the Gulf Stream reach Norway in the midst of winter, conditions are perfect for the Norwegian Arctic cod to spawn. All along the Lofoten archipelago, entire towns are built based on their abundance. Just along from Svalver is the campsite at Skarungen. We're still 40 kilometers southeast of Lofoten Lynx, but it's the perfect place to rest up for the night. We aren't propping up tents in the driving rain and huddling round a portable stove to cook tins of beans though. We're unpacking our bags in the cozy wooden cabins that line the sea inlet. There's a welcoming warmth here that feels like a hug from an old friend. The food is delicious, the views are dreamlike. We're about halfway between Harstad Norvik and Lofton Lynx. We stayed in these sheds on the, the waterfront here at the bottom of these mountains. We are about to go for a little walk, get some breakfast and uh, head to Lofton Lynx. Not a bad setting to wake up to. I'd happily stay here for the next few days, but we have a golf course to find. Two hours of winding roads remain, but it's not too much of a burden. Eventually pin flags come into view as we near our destination. Seeing that iconic second hole in the distance feels like spotting a celebrity. That's the, uh, the famous second hole, I think, the par three out in the water, where the rocks are. Our tea time isn't for a few hours. Thankfully, we have a distraction. Hoven is the first activity on our list. That's the Harry Potter style sorting hat monolith that guards the golf course. From its peak, it boasts a 360 degree view over the Norwegian sea to the north and the cavernous fjords to the south. One word to describe this view. Ethereal. Ethereal, okay, okay. He's used that one a few times, so we're gonna dock him points. <laughs> uh, this is Les Breed, AKA Shank Haney, mm. AKA my favorite golf instructor on Instagram, in life in general. Um, used to play on the LPGA, now a fashion and lifestyle inspiration to the golfing internet. What can't I do? I, I don't, I, that's a question I can't answer. <laughs> I simply don't know. We're actually not as well acquainted as some of the other members of the group, so I've got three questions for you. Who are you? Dylan Block. Where do you come from? California, United States. How old are you? I'm 19. 19. Look at this beard. <laughs> 19 years old. Ridiculous. And uh, what, do you, what do you do? What, what are you doing with your life right now? Professional golf. I'm trying to make the PGA Tour this year, so. Very nice. Happens. So he's going to beat us, is what he's saying. <laughs> the course. Yeah. Just a stone's throw from the golf course is Loven. That's Norwegian for barn. But inside feels more like a Viking longship. Varnished timber props up the wooden ceiling, and oatmeal coloured fabric drapes towards the floor. The food is painfully fresh, served by impossibly polite waiters who know each component of the dish like it was their own backstory. We eat cod with pickled cabbage and peas, beef entrecote with perfectly roasted baby potatoes. The group's collective battery is recharged. Loven sits at the back of a bright white sand beach, the site of our first foray into Norwegian tradition. It's time for sauna. More than simply a method of self-care, the sauna is a 10,000-year-old pillar of Scandinavian culture. Created by means of survival during harsh Finnish winters, caves were enclosed with animal skins and heated with fire. 
The caves, now sterilised by the smoke, could be heated continuously by pouring water on the rocks. Within these walls, children were born, gods worshipped, and elderly passed. These were more than saunas, they were liminal spaces between this earth and the next. An old proverb states, Two places are holy, church and sauna. Ah yes, I remember what we came here for. In 1990, Tor Alfred, farmer and owner of the land here, declared to his wife and children his desire to build the most awesome golf course in the world. Four years later, cancer took Tor's life, but his vision lived on through his son, Frodehov. Ten years after his ambitious claim, in 1998, six golf holes were nurtured out of the soil at Gimsoya, and Lofoten Lynx was officially born. Fast forward to 2023, and the course debuts in the official World Top 100. We caught up with Froda to find out more. It started with an idea of a friend of my father. Uh, he didn't play golf, but he, he was on a holiday in Scotland. He saw these lands, Lynx courses, the landscape, and he saw the similarity of the land that belonged to my father here behind us. And that just started with like an idea. And I read an article about uh, a person that dreamt about playing midnight sun golf. And this was in the 1990s, 1991, 1990, and then there's no golf courses in northern Norway then at that time. I was quite young when the idea came, so it became like my project after the year. I, want, I, didn't, I couldn't really put it aside, so I was, I've been studying uh, tourism and golf for a few years, and then I, the more I studied, the more I read, and the more I walked different courses, I understood that it's, it's too, too good an idea to, to not try to realize, to, to, to make. Yeah. So in, uh, in 97, I, I took it up again, got a little bit of money. Uh, mm -hmm. We opened a small six hole course in 98. Finally, it's time to tee off, touted as the best opening trio of holes in the world. We're eager to validate that claim, providing we have enough golf balls so, to make it that far. You want another ball? ball me. Just ball. so that the cameras know, Nathan has come to Lofton with no golf balls. This is Nathan. No golf balls and no golf tees. So on the first tee, I was requested to provide him with both. And he's just shelled one into the shit. You know what? Sometimes things happen, don't go according to plan, but... It's kind of good though, it frees you up. You don't care yeah, if you yeah. lose all my I mean, golf this balls, is, right? This is your money. Yeah. You know yeah. What I mean? <laughs> Exactly. That's quite pure, but it's also gone. <laughs> Draw. Oh, she's I think we are different in a way uh, because we've been trying to be different. Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, it's a links course, its a location is spectacular, and we always try to to build, be a little bit provocative, mm -hmm. uh, uh, not just for Norway but in general yeah. for golf. Yeah. Uh, a little bit like a new kid in the block that tries to take space, yeah, you know? and took space screen, quite quickly, screen straight into bit. the top 100. Yeah, it's amazing, and it's a, uh, you know, but the, the, we did it not really. We did it by how we built the golf course and yeah. how we tried to to push a little bit boundaries. I think mm -hmm. and uh, the whole one, yeah. you, you yeah. straight in your face, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so yeah, it starts pretty pretty it's hot, pretty tough. <laughs> yeah, but it's cool at the same time, you know. If you yeah. if you succeed and put the ball on the green, that's you feel like a king, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. If you have three balls in the water first, that's uh, <laughs> more boring. But that's that's yeah. a bit. Uh, but that's the discussion, you know. But in 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 that way, we also made attention, you know, not just hole one, but the, how the course is being designed. Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. So this is you've probably seen that famous photo. Uh, it's got like the northern lights behind the green that sits out on the ocean. Um, this is it, this is the second at Lofoten. It's only short, but I mean, it's meant to be epic. Yeah. Confirmed, uh, epic. One, four, nine. I'm here for you. Uh, this is Nathan, he's the Manor's TikTok guy. He is, he's him. He's handsome, he's got the butteriest swing in the north of England, um, and he's joined us in Lofton for the autumn winter campaign. Yep. How are you feeling about being here? I'm so happy to be here, to be honest, amongst great players, uh, are amongst these beautiful views, like... It really is quite a dream come it? true, to be honest. A, a dream of probably three weeks because I didn't know this place existed but thankfully these guys introduced me to this place because yeah it's just unbelievable to be honest so yeah happy to be here and let's go play some golf. There's a familiar feeling here. Blooming heather and large expansive greens take me back to the lynx lands of northern Scotland 
but I know I'm not there. There's a crispness to the air and a breadth to the horizon line that quietly assures me I'm on a different adventure. Endless sunlight, crystal clear water, towering mountains. This is otherworldly. This is a perfect place to see non lights because the non is an orbital around the, uh, the Earth. If you, you see it's a top, it's naturally where the non lights most of the time is. Yeah. And that's just up here. So it's like sitting in a, in a, in a theater and you, yeah. and you watch the, where the normal non lights is normally here. Amazing. And I understand there's a lot of Viking history on this land. My yeah. history isn't up to scratch, but I'm sure yours is more so than mine. So. Yeah, it's a, a, a yeah, Lofoten is a, like Lofoten in total is, a, is, is, is like a very rich historical mm -hmm. area for Norway. But the Hov, this uh, where the golf course is situated, is also a very old place. Mm -hmm. So we, we have seen that it's been living people here since before year zero. Wow. And, yeah. So it's been it's a very old. Uh, it's yeah. easy to, the sand sandy ground has made it easy to start with growing, yeah. you know, having cattle and yeah. you know, growing. Food, different yeah, yeah. things. So, uh, but it's also an old Viking settlement here. So okay. we, we think that it's a old chieftain who, several chieftains who lived here on this area. So it's yeah. a, it was a very important yeah. area. So it's graves and it's uh, okay. remains after Viking yeah. boat tours of long ships, Viking yeah. ships on yeah. the farm here, and it's also an old amphitheater for sacrificing. Wow. So uh, quite dramatic. Quite dramatic, yeah. yeah. So it's been happening a lot here. So it's a lot of skulls around. So it's like uh, we found golden rings and it pops up uh, skulls every second year. Oh. So uh, you just have to push them down again so you don't, <laughs> don't tell anyone. Of course. <laughs> Obviously, we are inspiring people because they are, uh, when they come to us, they, are, they planned it a long time ahead, like one year or two years even mm -hmm. before they come. Mm -hmm. And we want to give them, you know, this uh, rough, close to nature, this, this uh, like a bit, like you, you get a little bit surprised and that you get like, wow. Yeah. Uh, and we want to, we worked really hard on that, on the design, on the routing plan and, and how we have done things uh, to, to use the elements in the nature mm -hmm. as close as possible to the game. Yeah. So that you are, uh, you yeah, know, like it's, it's a little bit uh, in your face, you know? Of course. So, yeah, I mean, you've done an incredible so job on that front. There's, there literally isn't a weak hole on the course, and yeah, every okay. tee shot uh, is framed by one of the many fjords and mountains. Yeah, and that's, that's the idea all the time. We're trying yeah. to make every hole like an experience and, uh, and close to nature experience. So yes. we, we hope people like it. Played professional golf for years, sort of grinding out scores, um, you know, trying to optimize every possible asset of my game. And since then, since I stopped playing, we've traveled to some amazing places, um, met some amazing people, and seen cultures that I never thought I would see. And this has been the epitome of that. We've been playing golf in the absolute wilderness in the midst of the Norwegian fjords at Lofton Lynx and um, yeah it's really just very it's very affirming that um, you can get so much more out of this game than what I might have initially assumed which is professional golf. We race around the rest of the front nine. Hoven conquered earlier that morning reflects in the eerily still dark water hazards that flank the fairways on 8 and 9 as the light fades. We're heading down the 13th hole now. The light is fading quite quickly, can't quite see the ball flights, but the match kind of with it has faded into obscurity, I think because no one's really interested in the score at this point. Like, look at this. The score doesn't really matter when you're uh, playing in an environment like this, so. Yeah, we're just going to cruise in for the next few holes. It's just past 11pm now. There's a sting in my eyes that tells me it's past my bedtime, but the bright skies are trying to convince me otherwise. The whistle of the arctic breeze and the deep orange on the horizon drifts the group into a dreamlike haze. We wind back along the road to our cabins, knock back some Norwegian IPAs, and drift off under the northern lights.